Hey, this is Jake with the Tattoo Improvement Network. Be sure to join us for the first annual Space City Tattoo Expo, February 19th through 21st in Huntsville, Alabama. Check it out at SpaceCityTattooExpo.com. Welcome to Fireside Tattoo Podcast, the official podcast of the Tattoo Improvement Network. We're still here in Austin. Interview, what is this, three or four? We're just getting our getting our feet wet. Three and four. Can we count this as two? Yeah. Three and four, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, just met a couple of, uh, of, of new artists here in, uh, in Austin. Um, Roly, uh, what's your last name, Roly? Vito S. Say it again. Vito S. Vito S. Yeah. What, where are you from originally? Originally, I'm from Bolivia. Bolivia, mm-hmm. okay. And you're, and you're in Tennessee now, huh? Yeah, now I'm in Tennessee. I used to live in New York, too, and then I moved to Tennessee. Oh. How, how did the Bolivia to Tennessee well, trip happen? Boli- well, Bolivia went to New York, and then from New York, to met Tennessee. my wife and went to Tennessee. Oh, okay. She was from Tennessee? Or, is, or she just... He, she was living there at the time, like, gotcha. you know, army brat, so... Gotcha. All right. And you're still in New York. Marvin. I'm still in yeah. New York, yeah. And what's your yeah. last name again? I'm sorry. Uh, Silva. Sorry. Mar- yeah. Marvin Mar- Silva. Marvin Silva. Yeah. Uh, so you guys, uh, I just had a second to look at your, uh, to look at both your portfolios. You're both doing really nice work. And it's nice you're doing very different work. You're doing a lot, a lot of ba- black and gray, a lot of large scale stuff. You, you've been tattooing how long? This is my seventh year. Okay. So That's it? Oh, you dick. <laughs> 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 Have you been? When did you start moving into a lot of the larger scale pieces? Um, it was just little by little. Uh, maybe like three years ago, I started to do some sleeves, you know, yeah. and yeah, eventually started doing back pieces. Yeah. And I don't do too many of them, but you know, I try to do what try I can. Yeah. I mean, whatever I can do bigger, it's better, you know. Yeah. What about you, Marvin? You've been tattooing how long? I've been tattooing 11 years now. 11 years. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good deal. So you started pretty young? I started when I was 21. Okay. Yeah. Well, cool. Straight out of, I was actually still in college, you huh. know, and then started tattooing in the dorm rooms and then eventually just dropped out of school. And then, Yeah. Were you in art school or what? I was in, in audio production, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so here I was giving you tips on staying on the microphone and you know more, and about, I, it. No, you and know I, more about it than I do. No, I really don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I realized it was the wrong profession for me to get into. <laughs> um, uh, and, uh, and, and you're a little more, you, you were doing a lot of, uh, a little more color work, not a, yeah. Done, yeah. yeah did not yeah. notice. And I just got to kind of glance at, at, at both. You were, um, you're just starting to get into digital drawing a little bit. Yeah. I'm yeah. kind of dipping my toes in it too are you struggling it's fun and i can see the potential in it you know and it's definitely the learning curve is is crazy intimidating but i can see the potential ahead of that so i'm gonna just keep pushing and trying to get at least get used to it enough to be able to use it in some of the tattooing or designing the tattoos you know yeah yeah Have, have you tried any digital drawing at all really i have done some in the past but um I didn't really get used to it, so it took me a long time. Yeah. But uh, actually, this uh, yesterday when we first saw each other for the convention, he was telling me about this new program that he found, and I was like, all into it. I'm probably gonna have to get it too, you know, and what, start doing it. Yeah. What are you working in? What is um, it? Manga Studio. Okay. Yeah. You know? a, a friend of ours who's been on the show a couple of times, Russ Abbott, does uh, does some tutorials in Manga Studio. Bro, I don't know if you've uh, seen any awesome of his. Awesome tutorial. I actually just purchased one of his videos. Oh, did you? Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Um, it's awesome. He's yeah. he's really good at him. He's actually just started a, a Facebook group, like a Clip Studio Facebook group too, where people are. Right. Have you, are you in that? I'm in that too. Yeah. yeah. Me too. I just I just joined it. Um, uh, are you using a 
a, like a Wacom tablet or I'm using a, a bamboo pen. A bamboo. Yeah. Yeah. How do you how do you like it so I'm, far? I'm, I'm, I think it's clicking slowly. You yeah. know. I mean, I've, I'm sure the Wacom tablet uh, to be able to draw right on the screen is so much, a lot better. But I mean, it's what I have now, so yeah, I'll make use of it. Yeah. Have you, so that was your first experience, just playing with it today. You have you said you haven't done much before. Yeah, that. I was. He was just showing me a few stuff, and uh, you know, it's like great tools. Yeah. So you know, I think he's very good for an artist, tattoo artist, whatever. Right. So, yeah. I've, I've started. Um, I really like it for designing tattoos. It's nice because you can drop a photo uh, like of the body part in and like literally draw it on the person, which yeah. is nice. And uh, and I think it helps to. Um, uh, to like shoot it to your client and they can see what it will actually look like on their yeah. body, which is really nice. I've tried it a little bit with, um, I don't know if either of you guys paint uh, or do it art outside of tattooing, but I, I try to spend, a, I, I paint quite a bit and I'll try to scan paintings into it and play with them to like for make color decisions. Mm -hmm. I don't like it at all for that. I've really struggled with that. Have you tried, do either of you no, guys paint? I, you, yeah, yeah, we both paint. You, you both yeah. do? Have you tried to use it for paint to help you make painting decisions yet no not yet yeah i don't know why i don't like it it kind of like flat it looks like i'm it looks like i'm spray painting on top of my painting or something like that really you know yeah, yeah. it doesn't yeah, it doesn't work out really it doesn't right? translate for some yeah. for whatever reason what uh, stylistically what are you guys doing uh, from a painting standpoint is it stylized like tattooing or more realism for me i'm tackling more realism because in tattooing for me at least it takes forever to get the realism look to to look the way it should and not many of my clients are willing to either sit down or pay for all that time. So right. to satisfy that need to, to pursue that uh, part of art is I, I just have to, you know, then I keep that with painting. So my painting, I try to go hyper-realism with it. Yeah. Tattooing is more illustrative, more tattoo-like, right. you know. Oh, what about you, Do you, as far as your painting? I think I also go for, like, more realistic style. Uh -huh. But uh, I... All of my paintings, they're more colorful, I guess. Okay. You know, I, I, I try to explore more colors in the paintings because like the tattoos you saw, like I do mostly black and gray, but I guess when I get time to paint, I can just, you know, do whatever and I choose color, so it's, right. it's pretty good, you know? Yeah, but uh, but from a tattoo standpoint, you're doing some some realism and tattooing as well. So yeah. so as far as your approach, you're, you're, um, you're using more color, but your approach is similar for painting and for tattooing, would you say? Um, you know what, it kind of goes back and forth. It depends on like how long I go without painting. I get used to the tattooing mode, so you know, I, I kind of have to remember how to paint and then remember how do I do my tattooing. So, you know, but I mean, I, I feel like they, they both help me, you know, each, they help each other. Painting helps me out for tattooing and tattooing, I get some ideas for painting too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I enjoy how the mediums kind of help each other out. You know, yeah. and now with the digital drawing and the sketching, you can just add layers. It's like putting tracing paper on top of tracing yeah. paper, and it's it's amazing how you can, your brain just gets used to certain things, mm -hmm. and then it translates all you know, translates all across the board. Right. With your yeah. process. It's that. Yeah, it is. That, that, that's the thing with digital drawing that I love is you can just be as like as you can make as many marks as you want, and you can just drop <coughs> the opacity of that layer, add a new layer, and right. it's like, and you can just pull out what's important from the from the mess that you from started. The, yeah, with. exactly. Yeah, yeah I, I really love that about it. What um, what would you say, either in painting or in tattooing, what are your biggest kind of struggles right now? I mean, you guys are both in tattooing long enough and looking at your work. Technically, you've got, you have a good technical base, both mm -hmm. of you do. Do you find uh, that you have anything that you're struggling with? on a regular basis? Uh, I would say maybe controlling the colors, you know, trying to look for the the actual, the correct tone of a color is still a struggle for me. It's just always, you mix, you mix, you don't get it right, you scrape it off, you know? Right. It's just still a lot of trial and error. Yeah. You know, yeah. I spend most of my time mixing on the palette before I apply it on the canvas, which I would love to just add, you know, screw it, just put it up, but no, I'm Very training myself to not put anything that is not perfect for me in my eyes yet yeah. you know so until i get that right i won't make that next step you know right. so i kill myself i don't know why but have you seen the um or either of you guys seen the uh, parallel palette that david casson yeah i have i i bought one of those or i, I backed it on kickstarter or whatever it was on and mm -hmm. it's amazing just getting your palette in the exact same light uh, like right next to your painting how you can identify values so much 
easier, like instantly. Uh, yeah. Because you you know you're mixing on a palette down here in this light, and you're looking at a painting in this light, and you go to make a mark, and you're like, right. hey, it's you're, in the shadow you, in normally because sh your light is facing your canvas, and then yeah. and that's something yeah, I never interesting. considered before that. But that's a cool little tool. I've 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 really enjoyed using it. Um, so far, you might want to try it. What, what about you as far as struggle, tattooing or painting? Any Anything you you find you struggle um, with today? I guess, you know, like he was talking about like colors, I, I guess that's a really hard thing to master, uh -huh. you know, to get the right colors, uh, backgrounds and whatnot. Uh, I, maybe just time, you know, and practice. Yeah. But I also feel like trying to figure out what you want to do, you know, as a, what you want to show to the world as yours. I right. think that's a hard thing for me for painting and tattooing, you know, I'm still figuring out, like, like I was talking to him the other day, I was like, yeah, I really don't, I mean, I can paint, you know, people and stuff and skulls and this, but I actually don't know what I, what I would like to show as my style, you know, I'm not sure about that yet. And, um, but I used to be like more like stressed out about it. Cause I go on Instagram, I see all these great artists and they always show in the same style. Right. And it's like, oh man, these guys are doing that, you know, but, Right now I'm kind of like, you know, more relaxed about it and I'm just giving the time. Yeah, just letting and it come. Until I, 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 I see, you know, I guess one day I'm gonna post something and people are just gonna be like, oh yeah, you know, that's mm -hmm. that's pretty cool and you should keep on doing that and maybe that will start, I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. 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 That, we were talking about that with uh, Abel Sanchez who we just did an interview with and he, he comes from a, a shop where people have these very defined styles like on uh, Andreas Acosta worked with him who does the rose morphs and and so all you saw were roses out of that guy forever mm -hmm. or you see you, you people have a very specific we were talking about Joe Capabianco having such doing that same thing over and over and uh, like first off how do you even get to that point where you decide this is what I like I'm passionate enough about this subject matter that I'm just going to do it over and over yeah and then does it end up being a trap you know where you can't get away from it pitching all your stuff into doing that and yeah. like you it's like yeah, yeah I, I wonder that too yeah. But it's like, mm -hmm. it's a goal that you have that you you want to be able to, to, to do. And then once you get there, are you happy? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. So, so you're, you're, the conclusion that you've come to basically is that you're just going to do the things that the client brings to you and uh, and put make your own marks and mm -hmm. do your own drawings. And eventually a, a, a style will, yeah, will I, come um, from. I think, you know, I'm just going to wait and... Um, just write it alone, but every time you know I do a tattoo or a painting, I just try to do my best and try to incorporate something that I know the stuff I like. And uh, my guess is that eventually that will show me where I have to go, right. what I have to focus on, you know, because uh, right now I feel like, like I was telling you, I really like color, but most of the times I do black and gray. And sometimes I mix them, but I feel like eventually I'll, I'll just decide which one to do and, you know, I'll just focus on that focus yeah. on one or the other mm -hmm. do you think it's too i mean some people go back and forth but and, and and are good at a lot of different things but i mean do you feel like it's important to specialize uh, yeah special specialize am i saying that right uh, uh just to uh, just to kind of make your market but with tattooing being so competitive and so uh it was i think so, so many good artists yeah. i definitely think you have to find what you're really good at and try to change it into what you want it to be I, f I feel like that's the way because like you said there is so many people out there like focusing on this style or the other style or even like somebody like that's only roses you know like Philip Philip Garcia uh -huh. yep. mm -hmm. he just does the, the flowers with the skulls such a um, confined you know style and uh, he's just for that he's great you know and then you have other people that focus on a little bit different stuff or more you know expand their horizons but uh yeah. i feel like you have to kind of like focus to Specialize. be able to you know get out there the perfect and, one yeah. style just keep doing that yeah because oh. it'd be really hard to focus and on different areas and try to get good at all of those you know i mean some artists have done it like i've seen you know like Dimitri Samohin, I think that that guy, yeah. he can do so many stuff and he's just perfect, you know, yeah. like the, all the stuff he does. So, but, you know, for most artists, I think we should try to find our, our niche and what we really Most enjoy and do it. Yeah, and you agree with that? I agree, and, and have fun at the same time. Don't yeah. torture yourself too much. <laughs> yeah. You know? Do you, do you, I mean, yeah, it's kind of tough to do. I mean, do you feel like you're, uh, do you feel pressured to, uh, to identify yourself with the style and, and to do it 
quickly or do you, um, do you give yourself time to... I, I have no choice but to give myself time. Otherwise, I'm just forcing it, you yeah. know, just for the sake of finding a style. Yeah. So I think I do look, I, you know, to be honest, like, I'm sure we all do, you know, Instagram especially. You know, it's easier for us to look at other people's work and, and then you be inspired by it. And then, but it's hard not to copy it, you know, so right. it's good to look, but just don't don't copy just try to think yeah. of how you know say someone wanted a rose i don't want to do a F phil garcia style rose like i'm like okay how would how would i do it yeah and that's that's where it's hard you know to find your own way of doing it without yeah. looking at other people's work or other people's paintings and just genuinely show what what your you know your voice you know what you're gonna mm -hmm. what and eventually maybe hopefully you'll find a style that's different and people will like cling on to and mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, we did an interview that really um was one of my favorites that, that we've done with a, um, a guy named jeff hine who's a really really good figure painter and he um uh, i made the comment i guess that i don't i don't have anything you know a lot of artists have something to say whether it's social or political or whatever and i'm not really opinionated on a lot of things yeah. i don't have a subject matter that i'm very passionate about it's like you know i don't really have a, a, a style because of that and he's like well that's not your like, your style is your mark making he's like if if i were to set a pad and pencil out for everyone in this room and and we were just to sit and doodle like while we're talking uh we would all make unique marks no one's mark would be like anyone else's mark that's mm -hmm. the style you just have to find how you express that like you already have it basically is what he's saying yes, which made yeah. me feel better really. yeah, yeah, like, yeah actually you know what that's, that's, right. that's great that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like it's it's inherent you don't you'll you'll uh you'll find it you just have to keep drawing but if but like you're saying if you're constantly if you're looking at a phil garcia rose to draw a rose well then you're probably fighting an uphill battle you'll yeah. never you'll have a hard time <laughs> at uh, the very best you'll <laughs> your work's gonna look like phil garcia's <laughs> right the yeah. best, then, uh, which wouldn't be a bad thing it wouldn't be a bad thing at all i love his stuff uh, but Phil Garcia has taken, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> he has, um, you know, he put his mark in this, so exactly. Yeah, find another reason. mark. Yeah. So for that reason, I, I, we always encourage people to um, uh, to work in other mediums. And like you're saying, if I want to draw a rose, how would I make that rose my own? Like, well, first off, look at a rose and don't look at a drawing of a rose, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, uh, so do you? Do, what do you find? Both of you guys find that that painting is uh, bringing to your tattooing thinking of it specifically that way are you able because in painting I've, you know when you're when you're drawing a tattoo a lot of times you are your clients will bring you other tattoos as reference mm -hmm. and it's almost hard to get away from looking at tattoos when you're drawing tattoos right, right? but in painting it's very natural to use life or photo, mm -hmm. photographic reference right you rarely look at someone else's painting and try to copy it or i don't anyways yeah. do you feel like yeah. you can you can have a more consistent or maybe pure translation from in your uh, painting than from tattooing or does that make any sense yeah i think so because when you're looking at a photo uh, reference for a painting you're not looking uh, for me at least you're not i'm not copying i'm trying to break it down into shapes that make it easy for me to understand and if i can translate that in a canvas then that would be a success but i feel i don't know did i am i deviating a little too much no mm. no think that uh but yeah that makes I, sense. I just wonder if are you able to translate any of that to to tattooing or do you are the two pretty separate to you the mindset is pretty separate, yeah. but I feel like maybe the confidence, I'm getting more confidence uh, tattooing. If The more I paint, the more confident I am with the decisions that I make with tattooing. Yeah, you agree? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that, you know, with painting, you kind of want to show something, and with tattooing, it's, it's a little different. I, I can't, like, really point it out what it is. But it's with a service the, industry, you know. You know? Yeah, yeah, like we, now your you painting are, is your own personal. Yeah, I guess that tattoo is more of a collaboration. Right. Yeah. You know, you are working with your client to satisfy him, and then you satisfy yourself, you know, by doing, you know, what you like. Yeah. And then, when it comes to painting, is you, you are on your own trying to say something, trying to share something with the world that it makes sense to you, and you just kind of want to show it. And you know, it's. Yeah. It's all, all on you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah especially w with tattooers that are painting, I'm sure you could talk to portrait painters that do nothing but commission paintings that feel that they're trapped as well, you know, that, yeah. that feel the exact same way that, that, that we would feel about uh, tattooing. But, uh, but yeah, in, this, in that instance, definitely you're, you're painting for yourself and there's no outside influence out, other than what you're wanting to yeah, bring you're wanting to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, going forward from here, where do you guys see yourselves uh, developing? Are you happy stylistically with the way you're working? Are you happy where you're working in the part of the world that you're working, all that? 
Oh yeah, thinking. no complaints. New York you know, is a nice no, place to tattoo. New, New York is a it is a nice place to tattoo. Yeah. You know, it's an expensive place to tattoo. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, it's it's nice. You know. Yeah. Yeah. What, what very, about? very lucky. Uh, we're all very lucky. Yeah. This is a sick job. Yeah. You know, it's awesome. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. yeah I mean, tattooing, uh, I actually, you know, I I work in uh, Clarksville. And uh, so it's like an army town. Yeah. And I'm really happy what I got uh, in Clarksville because I got a clientele and, you know, it's pretty stable. Uh, but I don't want to say, oh, yeah, here is where I'm going to stay. You know, I'm really happy tattooing because I can move, do conventions, go to guest spots. And not get bored, you know, of a place. But if if eventually I have like a chance to work in Europe per se, you know, I, I will move. I, yeah. I don't have any problems with that. Yeah. yeah. You know, like I will, I will be great just to be able to move anywhere, you know. Right. As long as my wife is down to move, I'm cool too, you know. But yeah. what, uh, as far as that transition from New York uh, to a, Clarksville's a pretty small town. What, yeah. Uh, was it difficult to develop a clientele there? Was there a huge No, actually, um, I mean, just because it's an army town, it was actually kind of easy to develop people, you know? Yeah. The only thing that you have to deal is with uh, uh, your your clients always leaving. Right. They're always getting uh, moved to another station. And you kind of have to adjust to that. But there's always new people coming in, and they always hear, hey, you know, I heard from my buddy about you. So it's always a constant uh, refreshing client, you know, yeah. coming in. And uh, that that wasn't too hard. I actually tried to tattoo in New York before I moved to Tennessee, and it was, I really couldn't do it. I wanted to get an apprenticeship, and I couldn't get it. Huh. You know, and I had a portfolio. I went to um, uh, art school and everything, and I my portfolio, and they wouldn't care. Huh. <laughs> so I was like, man, it's tough, you know. Just yeah. just because of so much competition in New York. Yeah, I think uh, you will have to know somebody in New York that you know that owes you a favor or somebody <laughs> a favor to give you a chance. How were you able to get into tattooing in New York? Did you find it was pretty difficult? I actually got, uh, I started tattooing in a, my parents' basement. Okay. Like, you know, it's not the best way. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. And then well, I, I stopped that immediately and then eventually found out that the right way to go is uh, to get an apprenticeship. And I called everybody and one shop, one shop gave me a chance. Oh. And I worked my ass off for a year for free. And then eventually ended up going to a street shop and doing little, little tattoos all day and then just tried my best up until, you know, and then 11 years later, I'm still trying my best. Still trying <laughs> just, best. I'm still trying to are figure still, this thing out. Are you doing, um, <laughs> are, are you, are you doing mostly custom? Well, it looks like mostly custom, mostly a custom lot of custom work. stuff. Yeah. Is your shop mostly a custom shop? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no flash or anything like that. Gotcha. that not that it's, you know, I, I love that stuff, but we encourage just custom work. Yeah. What about you? Is your, is your shop custom or is it a... High? Yeah, it's custom. Like uh, up to maybe five years ago, we, we had some flash, mm -hmm. but like we got rid of it, you know. Huh. Uh, well, it, it got stored. It got stored right. somewhere. <laughs> you may, they yeah. dig it back out. Mm -hmm. What um, was that in an army town, you would think, you know, they expect to walk in and see some flash. Is yeah. the clientele kind of educated enough to know to come in with ideas? Or are they getting comfortable with the idea of consultations and yeah, drawing I mean, and all that? It's, I mean, especially in the shop that I'm working right now, like, I feel like people already come expecting more, you know, so they, they come over there and they're looking for something that is different from the rest that they've seen, which is like, you know, just regular shops with flash art and and that's it. And I think when they come over there, they, they're happy to see that it's different and stuff and they like it. So we have a good clientele like that. Huh. So, you know, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where, um, uh, if someone wanted, wanted to find either of you, is Instagram or the best way to find you? Or yeah, and so I'm all over. Website? You know, I have a website. Okay. Should what, I? Yeah, go ahead. What are those? Uh, my website is marvinsilvatattoo.com, and on Instagram, I am I am Marvin Silva. Uh, Facebook is also uh, Marvin Silva Tattoo. Facebook. You can just type in Marvin, Marvin Silva, Silva. You'll find yeah. it. Yeah. That many Marvin Silva tattooers. Yeah. The other one is a Brazilian doctor. Uh, you know, so. <laughs> Brazilian <laughs> doctor. That's nice. What uh, What about yours? I googled myself. You? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, just type Broly Virues, and for Instagram or Facebook, you'll find me. Yeah. Or the website is tattootechnique97.com. So. It's funny. We were doing. We have a. We have this podcast, and we were doing uh, a, a segment that is a technique segment. Right. It's just like I was wearing a head cam and like showing specific 
little pr ways to solve problems and things like that. And we, we're still doing it. It's just a short segment. And we started out calling it Tattoo Technique. And then we went to look up the name and we came across your shop in in, in Tennessee. Yeah. And it was awesome. already Tattoo Technique. It was like, oh, there already is one. So we changed it to Fireside Technique. But that's your chance so, to duke it out. Well, that's funny we came across that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, yeah, yeah. there's already one. And then we ran across you. Well, awesome. Well, thanks for coming on, guys. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. It. Yeah. Yeah. Sign on yeah. there. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much. Thanks.